Hello, I'm Fred Schneider, and you're tuned into The Weekly Report, a look at news and insight related to programs and services provided by departments of the City of Kansas City, Missouri. The City's Emergency Home Repair Program is now accepting applications. This program helps eligible homeowners complete necessary plumbing, electrical, mechanical, and limited barrier removal work for the disabled. To learn more information about this program, its requirements, or to apply, please visit kcmo.org housing and click on the Emergency Home Repair Program link. The city is continuing to convert several key downtown streets from one-way to two-way this month to help drivers more effectively navigate downtown Kansas City. The following streets are scheduled for the conversion. Walnut Street between Truman Road and 20th Street, Walnut Street between 5th Street and 12th Street, Baltimore Avenue between 10th Street and 12th Street, 14th Street between Broadway Boulevard and Wyandotte, and Charlotte Street between 8th Street and 11th Street. Please check the city's website at kcmo.org for updates regarding these street conversions. Eight city employees and one city team were honored at the 20th Annual Public Employees Recognition Day Awards Ceremony on May 7th at the Municipal Auditorium. The Greater Kansas City Federal Executive Board hosted this event, which annually honors men and women who serve as federal, state, and local government employees. Now let's check in with some of our city's departments for information and insight. Well, welcome to uh, our groundbreaking for some improvements here in Hidden Valley Park. And I guess one of our goals is to make Hidden Valley less hidden yes. uh, so that it uh, becomes one of the premier parks in the north land of the city. And we're glad to be here today for a very important groundbreaking event. Uh, I've got a few comments I'm going to make a little later on. But uh, first thing I'd like to do is ask uh, Dave Mecklenburg. And Dave, of course, is one of our park commissioners to come forward and, and make some comments. Uh, Commissioner Mecklenburg. Very pleased to see some activity happening in this park. The, the master plan uh, and uh, the beginning of the development of the park, which is long, long overdue. The population around here is, uh, is growing and getting thicker. The usage potential is going to be much greater. So uh, again, thank you all for coming. And uh, Alan, would you, uh, another commissioner, would you like to say something? Sure. Thank you. Alan Dillon. Thanks, Dave. Uh, also, I'd like to say thank you to Keith for all his efforts here. I think uh, actually the first time I met Keith, we talked about this park. So uh, it's great to be here today. This is a, quite a gem for our system, especially up here in the Northland. And uh, with this part of the park and then the natural area, it's just a, a great uh, area here for this whole neighborhood. And I'm really glad that we can do something here to, uh, it's needed some little uh, TLC for a little while. And so now we can provide that and glad that we're doing that. So. Glad you all are here today and we can start uh, start work on this. Thank you. Um, it used to be that uh, really the highlight uh, beyond the nature trail, which if you haven't gone down the trails on the south side of the park, uh, you should and take advantage of the opportunity while you can. Uh, but the other uh, main programming element was this parking lot that we all use. But now we're going to change that. We're going to get another parking lot, but even more so, uh, we're going to have a trail for individuals to use. We're going to have a, uh, a nine-hole disc golf course uh, for people to use. And that's exciting because it brings more people here, which makes it a safer park and a much more uh, fun park. Uh, to go to. It's an opportunity to bring your kids here and I brought mine today. Um, they're gonna they're gonna have a little fun throwing some dirt so stand back uh, when that happens. Um, yeah, but uh, this really is an opportunity for us to take another example of infrastructure that has been needed in this part of Clay County for a long time. That's, uh, that's why we're here today. Uh, I think it's time to grab some shovels and uh, I know we want to get uh, your family up here, Scott. Well, you can't keep them away. My son's already <laughs> Grab some shovels, so. You guys ready? Yeah. You guys got your pictures? Okay, on three, we're going to dig. One, two, three. Okay. Right, guys. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> Thanks, 
The Police Athletic League recently held their grand reopening at the Powell Center. The event was held to celebrate the completion of the new football and baseball fields and the myriad of improvements made this past year. Powell also used the opportunity to thank the many corporate partners who made the $750,000 worth of improvements possible. Oh, there you go. <laughs> yeah! Right. They worked. They worked. A lot of the changes that we've um, had down here include a new roof in an area that the roof was leaking, all new gutters for the building, the whole exterior of the building has been painted, we have a whole new parking lot, we have, uh, the NFL gave us $100,000 so that we could put in a football field for our kids. Um, we've had several contractors who donated fill dirt so that we could um, build a baseball field. We have cleaned the facility many, many times. Um, just cleaning the facility alone and then watching the kids walk in when they have a clean environment has been so rewarding. Last couple years have been kind of tough because I've lost my mom recently. Um, we lost her in 2010 to breast cancer, sadly. But hmm, with everyone here down at Powell, they've really comforted me. Back when I was little, I used to think officers were mean and all they would do was arrest and take people to jail. But once I came to Powell, it changed a lot because I would see that police officers aren't really that bad as I thought they were. They're actually really nice and they're a good time. From day one, you can see a change with the kids when they see that we are not just police officers, but we care and we're human beings. Having the police officers interact with these kids is absolutely key. The areas that these kids live in are not safe areas. This facility gives them a place to come that's safe, it's fun, it's nurturing, and their interactions with the cops in a positive way changes lives every single day. One afternoon, I came down to the center late in the day, and I sat down to, next to a little girl, and I asked her her name. She was all by herself. The whole gym was full of people. And I asked her her name, and she told me her name, and she was 10 years old, and she was very sad. And I asked her if I could do something to help, and she instantly started crying. And she said that she hadn't had breakfast that day, and that she wanted to kill herself at 10 years old because she had absolutely no friends. Those are the kind of kids that you interact down here with, and if you can help them make a connection with other kids or with one of the police officers to let them know that we do care about them and they are valued, that's why we do it. The needs are many and ongoing. If you would like to make a donation to the Powell Center or become a volunteer, please visit www.kcpal.org. I'm Officer Shelley Gaddis. Have a safe week. Part of the process of enforcing the Food Safety Code in Kansas City is making sure that food establishment staff and management are trained in food safety and know the food code. Classes for both food handlers and food managers are available at the Health Department and you can register by calling 816-513-6315 or visit our website www.kcmo.org. Because we understand that not everyone can make it out to these classes, we also offer online training classes for food handlers. The Health Department is currently partnered with two organizations to provide these trainings, StateFoodSafety.com and Premier Food Safety. Both trainings are available through our website. Wherever you plan to work, if you are required to get a food handler card, we encourage you to contact your local Health Department or visit their website to find an approved training provider. Unfortunately, Internet search engines don't always provide the best information on which trainings are officially accepted at the different jurisdictions. If you have any further questions on food safety in Kansas City, Missouri, you can contact us by calling 816-513-6315 or visit our website www.kcmo.org. Looking ahead, the city invites residents to a community meeting regarding 63rd Street and Prospect Avenue redevelopment. The meeting will take place Thursday, May 16th from 6 to 7.30 p.m. at the Southeast Community Center. City staff will present residents with environmental investigation results and will share ideas for possible future uses of the site. The City's Rebuild KC Neighborhood Mini Grant Program will accept grant applications through June 28th. Rebuild KC will award grants up to $2,000 to registered neighborhoods whose projects foster partnerships and build upon existing assets. For more information or to apply, visit kcmo.org slash rebuildkc. 
Registered neighborhoods committed to making their community a little bit greener may apply to the KC Green Neighborhood Recognition Program. The program will award neighborhoods that have implemented sustainable practices with KC Green Neighborhood signage, an eco kit, recognition in city publications, and more. Applications are due June 3rd and can be accessed online at kcmo.org slash kcgreen. For more information about this or any of today's stories, please log on to kcmo.org, scroll to the bottom right-hand corner, and click on the Weekly Report for links. That does it for this edition of the Weekly Report. I'm Fred Schneider. Have a great week! <music>